So the most critical points as we discussed inside of this, besides some of the visual analysis, is we need to make sure we know the mean and the standard deviation because these two values can really define a normal distribution in, in, their, in its entirety. The mean is the point of symmetry, the central point in the distribution, and the standard deviation tells us how data are dispersed around the mean. So in a normal distribution, what we care about is where is the center of it, and then how do people spread out around it? And we can take any normal distribution and convert it into what we call a standard normal distribution. And a standard normal distribution simply takes the raw information, the raw scores, which we annotate as X, and it converts them into what we call Z scores or standardized scores. The way that you make a Z score is you first center your scores, which means you subtract the mean. So the score minus the mean, right? And this should be kind of familiar. It's a deviation, right? Which we saw when we calculated sum of squares, okay? So here we have a deviation which centers our data. So now any value that was at the mean would become zero, right? And then this tells you how the, the values spread around the mean. Once you've done that, you divide by the standard deviation. And what this does now is it makes it such that your new unit of measure is in standard deviation units. So if, for example, the mean was 100 and X was 115, then you would get 115 minus 100 equals 15, right? That's the raw unit deviation from the mean. This score was 15 points above average. But if the standard deviation was also 15, then you would take that 15 and divide by 15. And what that now tells you is that this X score was one standard deviation above average. So it's 15 raw points or one standard deviation above average. So standard normal scores are by definition measured in standard deviations. So a Z score is a score in standard deviations. So if you get a Z score of positive two, that means that that score is two standard deviations above normal. If you get a Z score of negative one, it means that that score is one standard deviation below the mean. And so this is a really kind of easy and intuitive way to understand and compare across distributions. Um, so there is a real use to standard normal scores because they give us an immediate reference. So for example, if I told you that your friend went and took an IQ test and that they scored 130, if you don't know how IQ points on these tests are allocated, you wouldn't have any sense of whether or not that was a good score or not. But if I told you your friend was two standard deviations above normal, as long as you have a sense of this concept, you can say, oh, wow, that is a really high IQ. He's very smart, right? Because you, it's been measured in standard deviations. And so now if you know about this normal distribution, you can say, oh, two standard deviations above average, that's high, right? We learned the empirical rule briefly previously, right? So... This allows us to just get some more specific values. I have a bunch of follow-up videos that go through more about the specific values, more about the calculations, how to do them in Excel and how to make sense of them. So watch all of those as well for some calculation practice that'll help with your homework. But conceptually, that's what we're doing here is we're just taking scores and going from raw into standard deviation units. So if I were to take IQ scores, it works. And I go from your 30 IQ points above average to going your two standard deviations above average. Similarly, I could take height and, and standardize it. And in doing that, instead of saying, for example, you're eight inches taller than the average person, I would say something like you're one and a half standard deviations above the average height. And so the nice thing is now everything becomes comparable in these standard deviation units. In case you didn't see, in a standard normal distribution, because of this math, right, the mean of that standard normal distribution becomes zero, right? Because if a score is at the mean, then you get zero. So zero divided by anything ends up being zero. So the mean of the standard normal distribution is zero and the standard deviation becomes one because if a score is you know, 15 points from the mean and a standard deviation is 15, then that ends up being just one standard deviation. So Z scores, always in that zone. And that's why when you look at, well, what kind of Z scores do you get? A Z score of zero is right at the mean. 
right? Because it means that the score was equal to the mean in the data set. And the p-value for it, the cumulative p-value is 0.5. So that means 50% of scores are below the mean and 50% of scores are above the mean, right? Um, it's right in the middle. The approximate lower limit, I, I put it in quotation marks here because it's approximate. Because remember, we never actually intersect the axis there. So because we never cross it, P never actually gets to zero. It gets to approximately zero, right? But at about negative 3.49 is the approximate lower limit. Now you get Z scores smaller and bigger than these limits that happens. It just means they're very unlikely to occur. So it, it, it can happen. It does, you know, those values are produced for extreme cases, right? You get someone who is, you know, eight foot tall as a human, and they're going to have a Z score in the height distribution that's, you know, 12, <laughs> a very big value, right? So those extreme scores happen, but they are highly unlikely to happen. I mean, how many humans are eight foot tall, right? Okay. So it's not to say that these things are impossible, just that they are highly improbable. I often say statistics, there are things that are improbable, but nothing is impossible, right? So the lower limit here where prob the, the cumulative probability, that is values below that, value the percent of pro a proportion of values below negative 3.49 approximately zero on the other side positive 3.49 almost a hundred percent or proportion one of scores are below that value so essentially almost all z scores are contained within plus or minus 3.49 right and we learn with the empirical rule that 68 percent of scores approximately are between plus or minus one standard deviation 95% of scores are within plus or minus two standard deviations, and 99.7% of scores are between plus or minus three standard deviations. So here we see that almost 100% of scores are within plus or minus 3.49 standard deviations.